Nick speaking and welcome to this live stream and if you're new to the channel and you want to keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40k then please subscribe and hit the bell button what is that music about see see don't miss an upload ah that is my video playing in the background right stop that that's a good start isn't it right mute <laughs> Okay, let's get back to where we were. Right, hello everyone. Well, that's a bad intro. On top of that, I don't know if you could hear it, but there was a motorbike going past my blinds. <laughs> okay, so hopefully the sound and everything is working. Let me know if uh, it's not. So uh, today we are going to have a chat about the new Games Workshop release schedule. Is it good or bad for the hobby? Now, before we get into the little chat, I've got a few things that I want to uh, just go over, sort of updates, I suppose, whilst uh, a few people come and join in. Hello, everyone in the chat room. Is sound sounds good? Quality? Yes, excellent. Now, you'll notice a second camera in the back there. Later on, and don't let me forget, um, I want to do a little like b-roll footage of me doing the live stream so uh, i've got some notes here i've written it written it down so i shouldn't forget right so first of all um i just want to say a massive thank you for the live stream my first live stream that i did two weeks ago i thought that was uh, very successful and i really really enjoyed it and i was pretty impressed with myself because I only talked for half an hour uh, regarding the notes that I had and the other half an hour was literally just talking uh, with you guys in the chat and um, yeah I really enjoyed it I hope you guys did too so a massive thank you to everyone who joined that chat and to everyone who's joining in this one okay so uh, one thing I want to do as well is thank the people that uh, informed me about up driving, uh, up, updating my driver for the computer because my earphones uh, weren't working. Uh, so I updated the driver and it solved the problem. So that's awesome. Thank you to the, everyone who said that. Okay, so I actually want to do an apology now for the live stream that I did last time because I've got a few super chats in that uh, stream, uh, which was just amazing and totally unexpected. And uh, watching it back, I'm not sure that my reactions was that great. Um, I was just shocked, really, I think. And I um, just want to say that everyone who did that super chat, just a, a thank you and that I really did appreciate it. So um, hopefully if it ever happens again, I won't be so shocked. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to say apologies for that. Um, and if you would would if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing uh, this live stream for me, um, and also don't forget to press the like button as well because that really helps me out. Okay, so Necrons, uh, my mum. Quick update on my mum who had a knee replacement now just over three weeks ago. Uh, it's coming along quite nicely. She's had her staples out. Uh, and it's starting to heal up and uh, she's walking around. Thomas, Terry, thank you so much. Practice run. <laughs> well, thank you for that. <laughs> I really do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, she's uh, walking around now, obviously with crutches, uh, but not all the time, which is great. So coming along really nicely, which is great. Uh, however, did have a bit of bad news uh, this week, and that was back to the car. Uh, yeah, I had the MOT and it failed miserably. Um, 710 pound bill. So not very impressed with that, um, but what can you do? Cars need to be repaired so that I can uh, use it because I do need the car. Uh, but yeah, that was a bit of bad news. Hobby-wise, though, I did actually quite well. But I'm going to quickly read the comments. Uh, at least people can't complain about lack of content or models better than less. Yeah, that's the idea, really, of the live stream, because I have been incredibly uh, busy. 
um, and I just didn't have time to make a video for today. So I thought go live and I really enjoyed it last week. Um, I'm going to go live again uh, for a channel update because I think that works quite well as a, a live show. And potentially I might go live every other week. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but yes, hobby. So I've been very busy as usual painting the noise marines. Uh, the pink is coming along quite nicely. And I've also been painting the Necron terrain, which I am attempting to finish for Monday, not this Monday, uh, but the Monday after for the, that Necron video. Uh, I think I would have finished it by then, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm doing loads of hobby. Uh, I'm using the double one painting ritual for the pink and it's working really well. So I'm very happy about that. Okay, so hello from two hours away. Hello, ACMWL's Gaming. Where's the video about? Okay, yeah, the video about Anrakur uh, is on Monday. So that is coming up very soon. Right, I am going to just do a bit of B roll footage. So let's put this on the camera. Okay, don't need too much, just a couple of minutes. Just finished converting some of my Chaos Lords. Seven out of seven converted now. Awesome, good job. Why, why? You're the best YouTuber. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Okay, so Sponge Hammer is working on some Skaven. I'm not surprised because you've got a lot of Skaven to work on. <laughs> Hello, Paul from New Zealand. Right, okay, so Games Workshop, new release schedule. I even surprised myself with this topic because if you follow my channel, you probably know I'm not really into um, all of the new stuff from Games Workshop. I'm a pretty old school gamer, I've been doing the hobby for years. Um, however, I got a bit inspired by a couple of videos that I watched. Uh, the first one was from Fritz 40k and he was talking basically about uh, the death of the mini marines um, in favor of primaris marines very interesting video and uh, that got me thinking about uh, my son who um, is no longer on the channel but he used to be on the channel a good number of years ago with his space marine army and uh, he doesn't do the hobby anymore. And I've been thinking about the possibility of maybe getting his Space Marine army out and sort of having a game with it. But his army is just so out of date now compared to what Games Workshop have done with Space Marines. When he's got drop pods, Centurions, Rhinos, Razorbacks, not really what Space Marines are sort of played like from what I've seen these days. Not that I'm a massive Space Marine player, uh, but it got me thinking about how Games Workshop have obviously changed Space Marines so drastically. But not really, it's not just Space Marines, it's pretty much every army. I mean, look at Tau compared to how they were, compared to how they are now with the, the Riptides, you know, all the new models coming out bigger and better. You look at Aldar, then you've got to see the Wraith Knights all coming out. And just things have just changed so dramatically. It's not exactly a new thing uh, from Games Workshop. However, it seems like the uplift in the amount of change that we're having is just so rapid and so quick these days that I thought it would make a great topic for a chat coming from an old school sort of perspective, someone who doesn't necessarily buy all the, the all the new shiny toys but sort of just have a chat really and i had to come up with a topic idea so that's how i came up with this topic idea and it was compounded the other day by a video from uh, steve from who's uh, who took my dice miniature painting uh, and he showcased his space marine army which is basically full of tactical marines um and you know, he, was, he, he basically puts up, I think it was a Facebook post as well, saying, you know, I need to know what's happening with the Space Marines, you know. 
are the mini marines staying or is it all going to be a primaris because i need to know what to do with my army and i think space marines in particular are in you know a place of sort of high discussion really so i'm gonna have a quick sip of coffee do you think this sounds like it could be a good topic what do you think ninth edition is on its way i hope not i hope not i've done a mistake i used where are you oh, i've done a mistake i used plastic glue on resin oh dear yes no super glue definitely i'm running some blood angels and can't use them without some imperial guard stuff necrons need more attention for god's sake they enslave the Catan. yes <laughs> i can't argue with that okay so let's just see where we got up to okay so i was gonna have a quick chat about the old days because even though games workshop obviously have changed things over the years it was all at a much slower pace i mean it took 10 years for the necron codex to be updated and it was almost like now they've got just a lot more people on it they must have an awesome amount of sculptors and painters and rules writers compared to what they had in the old days they, they must be employing a lot more people having said that have you noticed with the rapid release that the painting of the models which they're producing just isn't quite as good as it used to be it's still very good don't get me wrong but i seem to remember in the old days when a, a model came out as in white dwarf you know painted by games workshop this is the latest release. You look at you looked at that model, and it was like just absolutely awesomely painted to the point it's like I could never paint it like that. But now, when you look at the painting of some of these new models, they're just almost tabletops. You know, maybe just above tabletop standard. But I think that's down to the fact that they're just releasing so much. I would imagine that the artists just have so many models to paint uh, that maybe the quality of the painting's gone downhill unless they've done that on purpose to make it look more achievable for people who are looking at the models. What do you think, guys? Do you think that the Games Workshop standard has gone downhill because they're just kicking out too many models or are they doing it on purpose just to make it look more achievable? Fix the monolith, yes, please. Okay, so I'll take some of your other questions at the end of the video. Um, some interesting ones popping up. Okay, so eighth edition index to codex is next to my list. And yeah, it made sense that we had a very quick release of all the codexes when eighth edition dropped obviously the idea was the indexes came out so that everyone could play the new new uh, rule set straight away and then they rapidly released all the codexes to come out uh, it made sense to have lots of releases however it did make it very hard for me to play my armies and i've got six armies in seventh edition I was eight, even though the rules were not the greatest, let's say, uh, but in seventh edition, I was able to play like four of my armies without having to, without struggling to make army lists or to you know, learn the rules of the armies or play the game. And I was able to play a different army each week. However, I've really struggled with that in eighth edition. I think it's because obviously we're getting all the rules changes all the time with chapter approved and FAQs, etc. Um, and obviously the meta is changing very quickly as well. So I've just found it really difficult to, to play more than one army, really. I mean, I've attempted to play two in it. So I've played them, I think, three times in eighth edition. Uh, but so far I've just sort of stuck with Necrons. And I just feel, I even feel like I've only like, done the tip of the iceberg of playing uh the necrons let alone getting other armies out i have attempted to play or at least make an army list for aldar um i got really disheartened with that because my aldar is based around uh the samhan um craft world 
although mine aren't painted red, they're painted purple, but the, the rules and, you know, I've, I've got vipers and wave serpents and jet bikes. Basically, I, I theme it around Samhan. Then I looked in the rules and the Samhan uh, traits or whatever they're called um, aren't actually very good. And I, I got a bit disheartened, to be honest with you. Necron player that play Eldar. Yes, that's me. Eldar have super cool models. They certainly do. And I'll tell you what, Eldar are great models to paint if you want to, to get to paint well, because there's so much detail. Did it ever get balanced? Old average, Brit, old average Brit Gaming says, the meta hasn't changed much. LVO top five, Imperial Soup. Four, Yunari Soup. One, but the new Chapter Proof 18 missions are removing the table you in two or three turns and win and doesn't work now. Yes, yeah, so the new missions seem to be better. I haven't played them yet, um, don't think. No, I haven't, uh, but I am going to. So, yeah, I've, I've struggled really with 8th edition. And on top of all of that, Games Workshop, of course, have been releasing, releasing a lot of box sets to the point I've written on here, when did it start to get crazy? Well, for me, it started to get crazy when Kill Team came out. Now, I know a lot of people, a lot of people uh, love Kill Team and I have nothing against it. I don't dislike it. It's just not for me. Because A, I prefer playing bigger games. B, if I want to play a small game, I can just play 40k, 500 points. C, I didn't want to learn another rule set. D, there's a lot of excuses. D, um, even though it's only a small investment, it's still extra money to, to pay uh, for the rule books and whatever. Um, and D, E, E, I don't have anyone to play it with because that's my sort of gaming group that I'm in. So I, I personally haven't got into Kill Team and I'm really happy that I didn't because, of course, there's been so many expansion packs and, and boxes. There's a Commanders, wasn't it? And then Elites. And I think there's a new one now. It's just gone crazy. Kill Team craziness. Um, and not only that, on top of all that, we've got all of the other box sets which have come in, coming out, like, have I written it down? I hope so. Yes, Blackstone Fortress, Shadow Spear, Blood Bowl, which actually is really good. I like the, the, the way they're doing Blood Bowl because they're bringing out the little teams. But I can imagine that if you enjoy playing Blood Bowl, I reckon the Games Workshop releases have been been quite good for you because... You know, you can expand your little teams once you've bought the main set. You know, I just see Blood Bowl being a bit uh, different. I just grabbed Shadow Spear. It does look pretty awesome with the models. I was watching the review. I watched quite a few reviews of that, but it was the Super Saiyan one um, where he was saying pretty much the, the Space Marine seemed to have quite a lot of duplicate models, whereas the Chaos side there's quite a few different but well, they're all different basically but the actual space marines are actually quite a few duplicates and he thought that it was um pretty expensive for what you get in the box good evening lug nuts cool channel name okay it really annoys me that there are models only available in the box set. I know it's marketing stuff, but still, yes, I, I totally get that. And obviously later on, they generally release the models separately, but not always. And then if there's a particular model that you want, what do you do? Do you wait, buy it on eBay, and then pay probably over the top for it, or do you just invest in the box set and then sell half of it? Obviously, we've had no Necrons in any of these box sets. The only Necrons that we've had is that little board game thing, which doesn't even include any Necron models. We've just got little counters. Um, yeah. So, 
the Games Workshop release schedule has got crazy, but is it good for the hobby? Go have a look at my notes. Okay. So, one side of me thinks that Games, Games Workshop are absolutely killing it with all these releases. The amount of models and absolutely awesome sculpts that they're putting up, their YouTube channel with all the painting tutorials, all the videos they're making, absolutely awesome. And the fact that we're getting all of these box sets with huge amounts of savings. When I remember the days we used to buy a box set from Games Workshops, you used to go in and say buy three fire prisms in a box set. And you paid exactly the same amount of money as if you bought three separate fire prisms. You know, Games Workshop discount that was unheard of. Now these box sets that are coming out, it's huge savings, awesome models, and probably a fantastic time for anyone to get into the hobby. And after all, I think that's what they're releasing all these things for, to try and get people into the hobby. That's probably what Kill Team is all about. Small game little starter up way to get into the hobby potentially if you buy say a necron kill team you might enjoy your necrons and then you might expand on that play 40k etc so that's one side of me the other side of me think i'm just going to read what i think because i've had to written it down uh okay one side of me thinks order models yes blah, blah. Right, the other side of me is just trying to ignore the Games Workshop releases. There's so many of them, and in actual fact, I am switching off because I know that I'm not going to invest in these box sets, and there's so many coming out. And just like the miniatures paintbrush said in one of his videos, that he's got. There's a new campaign box coming out. Can't remember which one it is, but one of the new ones which is just coming out. And he still has on his shelf the first campaign box set unopened. And it's like, well, there's a new one now, and I've still got the old one. And I think that's the thing. That's where that's where I that's the route I don't want to get down is getting hooked into all these new releases, buying them. And then sort of maybe you know, building them, maybe half painting them. All of a sudden, there's another one coming out. And how do you decide when you're on, you have limited funds and what you're going to actually invest your money in? Uh, as I said, I prefer the bigger games of 40k. That's what I like. So if I do have some surplus money, I'd rather buy models for my armies for 40k than maybe invest in a new box set. No matter how awesome it is, like this new shadow spear that's coming out, when potentially I could buy that, I could give the Space Marines half to my daughter, and then I could have the other half, the Chaos, for my army, but, well, for me. But that's, am I right in saying that's a corn, corn half of Chaos, I believe? So it's not really going to fit into my Slanesh army, probably not into my Nurgle army. So no matter how good it is, I personally have sort of, I'm just switching off of it. I'm trying not to get roped into buying all these fantastic new toys. Now, part of me thinks, am I going to regret it? Things have come out in the past that I haven't bought and I thought, I wish I'd bought that. And then all of a sudden it's no longer available. But I think you have to sort of draw a line in the sand Say no. This is what I. This is what I like. This is what I want to get from the hobby. And Games Workshop, you're not going to tempt me by all these new toys. Okay. So, what do you guys think is the new Games Workshop schedule release good or bad for the hobby? Let me know in the comments. Okay, let's read a few of these comments which have been coming up. Thank you everyone for being so active. Where did the cat go that should have been in the box? 
<laughs> well, I do have a cat. Let me show you because I've got a cat. It's my new microphone and it has a dead cat on it. Is that good enough for you? <laughs> I agree. I'm trying to just stick to one of two armies. Just kind of good, especially for the new players. Well, I think that's it. I think that this this amazing release schedule is great if you're a new player um, or into indeed enticing new players into the hobby. Is it great for a long time hobbyist like me? Probably not. Not unless I have either a reasonable amount of disposable income and a reasonable amount of time to actually build and paint all of these fantastic new kits that are coming out. I've got six armies. I uh, I do not want to buy a kit that maybe contains one army which is mine and then another army which isn't. I don't want to start another army if I can help it. I'm sitting on five armies and I really do like the new schedule, but I really do wish they would spread it out a little more amongst the lesser supported armies such as Necrons. Yeah, I mean, it's again, it's going back to what I said about the design studio. I mean, just imagine, I mean, how many sculptors do they have? And I have no idea, right? But let's just say they employ, I don't know, say 10 sculptors. And then, let's say two years ago, they said, right, we want to do Sisters of Battle. We're going to redo that 2019. Uh, we want you to design all these models. You've got to go from concept arts to obviously sculpting them, however they do it. I don't know how they do it. Sculpt, I assume they sculpt the models before they put them into the molds, etc. They probably have, I don't know how many guys they employ or girls to do that, but it's, do you know what I mean? It's like, they must be under a lot of pressure to release all these models, you know, and there's so many factions, you're going to have people screaming out for new models. You know, we want new, we want new striking scorpions, we want new shadows, sh uh, warp spiders, you know, Necrons need new warriors, you know, everybody wants new models for their armies. So, Obviously, what they're going to do is they're going to focus on the armies and the units that are most popular, that people are going to buy. Orcs are really cool. I was thinking of getting them next. They are very, very cool, and I really enjoy painting orcs. I'm not sure I would enjoy painting a 100 orcs, but it's good fun painting a few characters uh, and there's certainly a lot of fun to play against. I think release schedule with all the releases is great to bring people into the hobby. I totally agree, Keith. I think it is very good um, at getting people into the hobby. That's ideally, I think, what it's all about, isn't it? I feel the Necrons need a buff of some sort. Orcs, Salamanders, Eldar, Dark Eldar, Necrons and Death Guard. Being a sculptor at Games Workshop is probably an extremely difficult job. I totally agree, especially that they've got to be like pressure as well on, on when they're doing the sculpts. And I'm sure no none of those sculptors want to be known for making a really bad model <laughs> either. So I bet there is a lot of pressure. I've got no way keeping up with the releases, so I've had to be realistic and build and paint what I've already got. That is exactly what I'm doing. Nick, what do you think about Necron models? Do we need more? We do not need more models. We've got a good amount of models. We've got 12 characters. Um, I, I don't think we need any more models, to be fair. As I said uh, in, uh, many times before, obviously a new Necron Catan would be good. You know, a proper Star Guard, big model, Magnus sized, just because everyone else has a big model. Yo, Nick, about time we had another live video. Thank you, Six Plus Devo. Yes, 
I think I'm going to go live every other week. How about more troops? No, we don't need more troops. We just need Necron warriors. That's our troops. That's what Necrons are. Terminators. It'd be good to have warriors on a three plus save again, though. I know a lot of people say about um, putting flayed ones as troops, which it's always been talked about. The issue that I think you would have, though, with that is they'd have the gene stealer issue, whereas you have your troops which want to get up close and personal rather than standing on objectives. So I don't think that flayed ones would make great uh, troops. I'm happy with warriors and immortals as troops in terms of you know the units. Um, obviously, we've got the minor points reductions, which have helped. Um, but I suppose you only have to talk to a Space Marine player, um, you know, a three plus save or a four plus save on a, a toughness four model doesn't really cut the mustard in eighth edition. I'm back. My phone crashed. Welcome back. Possibly bring back the pariahs. I don't think it will happen, eh? Because obviously they changed the fluff, didn't they? Which is why they got rid of the, the prior. Uh, but also they sort of brought them back with Lich God um, and Praetorians. That's sort of amalgamation of the, the prior. Kill Team is all about getting people to buy a box of models from every range. Absolutely. Honestly, an easy way to fix the Force Organization Battalion Brigade Detachment whilst retaining RP benefits. A full squad of Immortals or Warriors counts as two separate troops for Force Organization purposes. Yeah, it could work. What we need to be able to do is hoard increased size limits of troops, maybe give some more options however i think your opinions are solid sorry if i stop reading when, when i'm reading but what happens is the chat uh, moves so i'll be reading and then somebody will type something and it pops up and then i lose lose track just joins what's been asked so we've been talking about games workshop release schedule i've had a little chat about it and then i asked you guys the question uh, do you think the new Games Workshop release schedule is good or bad, i.e. the crazy amount of awesome models and kits that they've been kicking out, uh, which I haven't been buying? <laughs> I don't know if anyone said this, but I think Kill Team expansions are definitely marked in to play 40k investment of models isn't so extreme up front yeah absolutely um it's when I mean, if i was just starting out i would probably play kill team because there's no way i could afford like the massive armies that i've got now um so and i wouldn't necessarily know about playing big games of 40k if i went into games workshop and, they, and i said you know fancy having a go you know what have you got and he goes Here's a box of Necron Kill Team. And I looked at that, I thought, wow, Necrons! And I would buy that and play it, and I'm sure I would be happy, especially if I've got opponents to play you know, with it. Um, so I can definitely see the sell of it, absolutely. Easy assemble kits, what do you mean? That's so basically the sort of the push together ones, you know, where you don't really have too many options, like the arm sockets, like fixed only goes into one place necrons i think need more ranged models yes i mean i love uh necron destroyers as they are they're awesome but imagine those with the 36 inch gun back i think we do need 36 inches on something um in terms of volume of dice because our long range guns just are very few and far between Beast and Brushes, hi. He says, I wanted to buy Blackstone Fortress, but now the Shadow Spear and the Chaos releases come holding out to see what else comes out. My wife is already okay with any Chaos purchase. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what I was talking about uh, when I mentioned um, the miniature paintbrush. And he, you know, he said basically there's this new box set coming out, and I've still got the old one on the shelf, which I haven't even opened, let alone built and painted it. And it's like, well, I could buy that, but what is around the corner? I mean, I, this new shadow spear set that's coming out, it looks awesome. But if I bought it, say I invested, I think, isn't it 105 pounds? roughly if i invested that money and then in a month's time they might bring out another box set that's got necrons in which i would rather have so what do you do do you just wait until something comes out that you really want okay i've been tagged in something is it beer what do you think of that ancient ziggurat that can be used almost anywhere what should change to make it viable to people to think getting and playing with do you mean the Forge World thing? Range is a massive drawback of Necrons. Combined with our slow speed, perhaps a beta rule akin to the bolt gun rules, where we have double the range if we stand still, might make us too similar to Tau. I think that, um, yeah, the, the rapid fire thing would definitely benefit Necrons as well as Space Marines. Dave, dodgy, dodge. Is it dodge or dodgy? You can wait until 2024 when the new Necrons miniatures come out and wait to buy the box set then. I could. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that thing. OK, yeah, the Forge World thing. I haven't looked at the rules um, recently, but I don't think they've changed from when I reviewed it on the channel. Um, Apart from obviously actually being able to buy the, the thing because it's fairly expensive as a model, I don't think it's that usable. Uh, it's okay for fun games, but I don't see anyone using it in anywhere near um, a half competitive um, list. It's pronounced dog. Oh, okay. Right here. Thank you, Dave. Dog. How do you, Tyler? okay so yeah that's what i was going to talk about today like i said i'm not the world's expert on uh, new, new releases i can hardly remember any of the names which is why i've got them all written down uh, because the main reason for that is whilst i do keep up with the stuff i'm, I'm not like that interested enough to take a note of all of the details of it because i don't necessarily intend on buying it I don't really think Necrons need more range. It is their weakness. Every faction is weak in some areas. Perhaps they could have more ways around it, like teleporting shenanigans. Sort of true. Although I think Necrons weakness at the moment is their anti-tank isn't amazing, or at least the choices of anti-tank units. Necrons are weak against psychers. Yeah, but that's normal. We've never been very good against psychers. That's, that is one of our weakness, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. Especially in today's modern game where you play someone like Thousand Suns and that's basically their, their main um, attack is in the psychic phase. Six plus Stevo. Absolutely, Stevo. This thing is we don't have that many strengths. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't got many weaknesses, but we haven't got many strengths. We're sort of like in between, aren't we? I think I think they should make a rule called ranged protocol where all troops that don't move can shoot 32 inches. That sounds good, doesn't it? Even if they just say if you don't move, you get an extra six inches on your, your range of guns. I mean, that, that could make quite a big difference shooting. So you'd rather shoot 24 inches, you can shoot 30 inches. What do you think about the smaller games like Lord of Rings getting more attention when Necrons don't get too much love? I've never played Lord of the Rings. Um, obviously, the movies are pretty cool. What do I think about that? I mean, in, it's difficult. It's so difficult, isn't it? Because although Necrons aren't necessarily getting that much love, um, in some ways, that's actually quite good. 
because it's my main army and I have to be honest with you, I'd hate it to become top tiered army that everyone just, you know, it's like just awesome army, it's like fantastic and it's, everybody wants to play it and everyone goes out and buys Necrons and they play it because it's a good army. You know, I play Necrons because I love Necrons and I don't play tournaments anyway, but, you know, I think that I can play a Necron army quite reasonably well um, with the rule set that we've got. We've got a lot of models, a lot more choices than we ever did in the past in terms of the units that we've got. So I'm sort of happy being the underdog and not necessarily getting too much attention. Obviously, one day we will. It's going to happen. Every army gets their heyday. Victim of progress. <clears throat> Jesus, son, you need to read the Warhammer rulebook. Psychic powers to Catan is like a snowman to a supernova. <laughs> I like the reanimation protocol that Necrons have. Yeah, it's a pretty cool rule. I think it would be maybe better if it was an after save it might solve the issue a little bit more of um, units being wiped so your warriors for example um, if you could take it as an after save rather than waiting until the beginning of your next turn you've got more chance of the whole unit not being wiped out so i think it would be slightly better that way but then it wouldn't necessarily make the like, rp role unique from everyone else I collect Skaven because those excuse. Oh, I collect Skaven because they're crazy. Yay. Playing the top tier army would suck. All those excuses every time you win a game. Exactly. <laughs> I just like seeing people playing Necrons because they love Necrons, not because they've got a super uber army that's going to win everything. Kujo Painting, welcome. He says. I like to see that then redo the fine cost models in plastic or actual resin rather than releasing more new stuff. Absolutely, I cannot agree more. I am, well, I refuse to buy any of the Necron characters in fine cast. I have Imatech and that was badly sculpted. Uh, and I have a bent staff, and although I, I heat it up and I bend it back into shape. Uh, in the summer months, I get it out and it's all bent again. The, the fine cast is dreadful. Necrons. Love me some killer space Egyptians and why not? Keith Hall says, the only thing I want besides a Necron redo is Games Workshop to take more ownership of the game, get more involved with the third party such as frontline gaming and tournament organizers yeah i think um if i remember rightly in the old days you only had to have 75 percent of games workshop uh plastic or whatever on your models so you, you could have other stuff on your models to play but now it's a hundred you've got to have a hundred percent games workshop so it's like my noise marines i could never take them to an official games workshop run event to play them i couldn't uh, put them into armies on parade in a games workshop store that's not right is it it's i still have a noise marines i still have like an empress children army i've got a good amount of games workshop bits on there i'm playing the game of warhammer 40k because i love it and it's their game and I've taken the time to paint the models. Why shouldn't I be allowed to go to the tournament with that army just because I've got a few third party bits, which Games Workshop don't make? If Games Workshop made them, fair enough. Oh, wow. I've just realized that my video has just stopped. That was supposed to be a two minute B roll and it's been recording pretty much from the beginning of this. <laughs> That's a lot of B-roll footage. You're right, Nick. 50% of the model should be Games Workshop. Yeah, I think 50%. That's 
that should be fine. You know, as long as you've got some Games Workshop stuff on there, you're using the Games Workshop rules. They look like Noise Marine still. So, so what if they're a third party, you know, company? I mean, yeah, it doesn't seem fair, does it? I mean, I could enter a Canon. I've got a Canon camera here, right? I could be a really good photographer, enter a photo competition run by, sponsored by Canon, take the picture on a Canon camera, but I might have, say, a Sigma lens on there. Does that mean I can't enter the competition because I've used a third party lens on the Canon camera? No, of course not. Nick, what do you think about the incredible duo Nemesaur Vargard? I've played it once and it's very good fun. Um, I enjoy it. It's, I think if you want to play sort of a fun gimmicky type army, then it's a nice combo. All Games Workshop, yes, that's right, Thomas. Um, currently, as far as I'm aware, if you go to a Games Workshop run tournament or painting competition or armies on parade, uh, the, the whole model, I believe that there's even been a bit of a scandal about even the base has to be Games Workshop, although I don't think that's being actually enforced, but yeah. We should have a game at Warhammer World. Yeah, Warhammer World's um, it's not like amazingly far from me, um, but it's a reasonable amount from me. Um, I live down right on the south coast of England. Dave Dog, got it right that time. The irony is that many of those miniatures in White Dwarf are not painted 100% using Games Workshop paints <laughs> or paint brushes, probably not even their glue. <laughs> <laughs> okay 40k mechanicus is fun you play as admech but you get to explore a tomb world i want games workshop and player base to stop pushing competitive warhammer as it is quite far what competitive game should be game like warhammer is way too random and no matter how well you play you can get by the dice yeah absolutely especially when you've got d6 like weapons d6 shots d6 uh, damage how can that be competitive when you're relying on a, a dice roll with such drastic results nick the dude that makes an army full of sentry pylons that's me <laughs> But not to not at a tournament, obviously. Well, maybe if I was allowed to. <laughs> <coughs> Good evening, Jamie. When do you think we'll see a new Sisters of Battle, if ever, at this rate? I believe they're coming this this year, aren't they? I believe it might be part of an upcoming box set release campaign thingy. <laughs> Hello, Brian from Atomic Scale Model Freak. Just for reference, there's uh, two links in the pinned comment, uh, one to the Miniatures Paint Brush and one to Who Took My Dice Miniature Wargaming. Make sure you check them out. I already did a little shout for them earlier in the video, but if you've just joined, check those links out for me. OK, Victim of Progress, he says, speaking of Relying on dice rolls, what do you think of our horrible randomness with the Doomsday Arc being D6 and D6 and Destroyers being D3 and D6 respectively? Same with the Monolith. What do I think? I think it's a bit annoying. Um, Destroyers, not too bad. The D3 is okay. D6, I think there's just such a big difference, isn't there, from rolling, say, a 1 or a 2 to rolling a 5 or a 6. I mean, that's it's a huge difference. I think it would be better off to say, I don't know, maybe have, like, a fixed amount of damage that you at least do, plus you roll a dice. So maybe, like, 3 plus D3. So at least you're, well, that would be then damage of 4, but that's still not that, that much, is it, for a doomsday arc? <laughs> 
It is made competitive by people optimizing lists to reduce the level of luck involved, mate. Yeah, well, that, that is true. But then when you don't have much anti-tank stuff like Necrons and all the anti-tank stuff that you do have is all D6 random shots and damage, it's hard to narrow the field down of randomness. You all keep chatting and I will keep subbing your channels. Thank you, Brian. Do you play any other tabletop games? I play Star Trek Attack Wing. I played that uh, last night, actually. That was good fun. Uh, nothing too serious. We just we take one ship each and uh, we just play. And we have like three games in the evening. Uh, it's good fun. Um, that's pretty much the only other game apart from, well, I play Man of War, which is my buddy's game, um, and Blood Bowl. Again, that's my buddy's game. Basically, I only ever really do 40k, but if my buddies come round and they say, hey, we've got this game, then I'll play it. But um, I don't tend to invest my time or money in other systems. Okay, Death Corpse Commissar says, Games Workshop needs to stop releasing new armies and models and start releasing much needed new sculpts for existing models. Yes, but how much extra money is that going to give them compared to releasing uh, new armies and models so let's just say uh Aldar warp spiders which in my opinion are absolutely desperate for a new sculpt i mean i don't know how old that is but that's probably one of the oldest sculpts around um but if they did release a new sculpt would i buy it because i already have 15 uh, warp spider no i think i've got 18 three sets of six would i go out and buy new warp spiders just because they come out with a new awesome model probably not so then again if they came out with a new game i personally probably wouldn't buy that either as i've already talked about in this um stream but yeah Nick, have you tried Age of Sigma? I have. I played one game. I played Ace Face. Uh, he brought two armies around, Corn and Skaven. He played the Skaven. I played the Corn, and I was very pleased to say I beat him. Yes, on the same day as beating him with Warhammer Forty K. Yes. <laughs> Hello to Tabletop War Room. Say what? <laughs> okay feel no pain on monoliths would fit well yeah monoliths they need, need something but they won't guess anything because it's the same thing really the games workshop no there's a lot of necron players with monoliths it was the only tank that we had and they don't want us playing the old tanks they want us buying new tanks so let's just make the monolith pretty bad and let's make the doomsday arc really good so we have to go out and buy them Hello, Darth Tordin. How are you doing? What if the box set was Aldar versus Necrons in a themed battle of the Old Ones game? I wouldn't buy uh, the box set because it was a different sort of game. Um, I might buy a Necrons and Aldar box set if it came with loads of new sculpts just because I want the models. I'd probably buy a box set like that for the models more than for like a new game like say speed freaks or whatever um i don't really need any new games i've, I've got my 40k that that's what i like to play mainly down to time i just don't have time i play once a week um and i have a small gaming group so any any new game that i decide i want to play i've then got to convince my buddy to play it as well Paul William says, have you done a battle report with the Empress children yet? Do you know when you will if you haven't? Okay, I haven't done one because they're not finished. Um, I'm currently painting the 36 noise marines. They're coming along slowly but surely. Got to get those painted. And then I wanted to make, do some demon apps. I've got a couple of HQs to go. Um, by the end of the year, battle report, maybe. Next year, maybe. Slowly but surely with the Empress children, because I am painting them to a reasonably high standard. Well, I think they're going to be. Let's put it this way. I'm putting a lot of effort into them. 
So I'm not just going to rush them to get them on the table. The army, really, to be fair, the Empress Children Army isn't there to, to play on the table anyway. It's just like a personal project, which I'm doing. Duck You Sucker says, Idik Beer, what are your thoughts on Theresa May? I don't do politics. How is the car, mate? The car is dreadful. Yeah, I had a £710 uh, MOT car bill. Good evening, The Hobby Corner. How are you doing? Okay, Victim of Progress says, yeah, that's what I don't like about their on-off games. Me and my friends just buy the models and never bother playing any of those games. Yeah. Do you know a lot about car, Nick? I know nothing about cars. I, for, for me, a car gets me from A to B. I don't care what the model is, what colour it is, uh, as long as it's cheap to run and gets me from A and B. Reliable, cheap to run, A to B. That's uh, that's it for me when it comes to a car. Hello there, Nick. How come you still on so late? I started late. Um, I started at 10 o'clock. I did a poll on Facebook and on my community tab and everyone, well, and the majority of people uh, picked 10 o'clock as a time. Actually, it's pretty good 10 o'clock because it means I can do some stuff before I go live, uh, which is quite handy. So. 710 out i've got my mot coming up you are making me nervous yeah i had so much wrong uh tire brakes suspension suspension pins and stuff i don't even know what it is what new necron units would you like to see i don't necessarily want to see new necron units um i'd like to see uh, some of the units we've got changed i think we, we talked about um slightly longer range guns uh, maybe a special rule like the space marines have or if we stand still we might get an extra six inches on our guns do you think necron troops should be able to take special weapons no let's just make gauze good <laughs> against vehicles i mean, I mean gauze is good but it would be great if we had some extra rules for vehicles Idik, did you end up getting an airbrush? No, never. No, still haven't got one. I think I would like to get one one day. But I think if I do eventually do commission painting, I think an airbrush is going to be invaluable um, because hand brushing does, just takes forever, doesn't it? But then I do enjoy hand brushing and Whilst I've never painted with an airbrush, I feel like I would be more proud of something like painted with a brush than an airbrush. I'm not saying that painting with an airbrush is not skillful, because I'm sure it is. It's probably more skillful than actually painting with a brush. Uh, but, but in my mind's eye, I feel more artistic painting with an actual brush than I think I would, because I don't know, because I haven't got one, and I've never used one than I think I would with an airbrush. I go for the MOT, see what needs to be done, go down the Euro car parts on the weekend as they always do weekend discounts and fix up the car with my mate, save so much money, never go Halford's rip off. Yeah, well, I, I do not know anything about cars. Um, I use a little local garage. It's normally pretty good to be fair. Um, most of the time my cars, you know, passes the MOT, but not on this occasion. <clears throat> Victim of Progress says, I've got a new airbrush recently. It's been blowing my mind. It is so much quicker than hand brushing. Absolutely, I bet it is. And the best part is you can lay out the basics with the airbrush and finishing with normal brush. Yeah, I, I can certainly see that. I think the other issue that I've got as well is all of my armies, which most of them, to be fair, are pretty, um, a, a good amount of models painted. I mean, my Dark Eldar's fully painted, my Necrons are fully painted apart from one or two models that I've recently acquired. 
my space wolves are half painted my Eldar, i've got a few aspect warriors and things to still paint but i've got a good amount painted and they're all painted with a brush and i don't know that if i start airbrushing it's going to look different so it's another thing as well that's holding me back but like i said if i was going to do commission painting whereas i'm starting a brand new project each time well then you could go in with the airbrush probably no repair d3 ho is not bad i'm new to 40k having started in august and i have fallen in love with the death marks i tend to play them as a suicide squad i'll use the teleporting to clog up my enemy on the board six squads of five you have six squads of five death marks wow yeah death marks they're, they're fun and well i've never played six squads of five but i imagine that actually would give you some good tactical options do you find that the rest of your army army is compromised because you've got so many nick airbrush is a different skill one is not better than the other yeah yeah i can sort of see that my buddy keeps hollering for a point reduction for monoliths and quantum shielding for flayers do you agree yes uh, monolith is way 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 over costed for what it does um should be about 200 points i reckon for what it does so i don't mind paying the points for the monolith if the rules are worth it and they are not worth it the gun is rubbish um compared to the doomsday arc and it's short ranged okay you've got the deep strike you know it's got some funky rules but the rules are just not worth worth the points they could tweak it they could easily tweak it nick the ultimate question death marks or flayed ones the advantage you have with death marks is you can hold them in reserve and deep strike them and pretty much guarantee you're going to be able to shoot something Whereas with flayed ones, they come in and you can attempt to assault, but you can't pretty much guarantee an assault. So I suppose if you're looking at a single unit as a distraction unit to deep strike him, then probably death marks would be the better option. Having said that, I play flayed ones as my little distraction unit because I like them. And if you can get that charge off, that's fun. You know, coming with flayed ones and charging in, doing all those attacks is great. Uh, so I prefer the flayed ones, but I suppose ultimately, if you're talking about, we talked about this earlier, you know, going uh, for the most reliable things that you can, then probably death marks would be better because, like I said, you can pretty much guarantee that you at least be able to shoot before they die. Whereas if flayed ones come down and you, you don't hide them, uh, you just go all out for the assault and you fed it, you're probably going to die next term. I personally am very happy that nothing with more than 12 wounds has quantum shielding. I think that at 12 plus wounds, quantum shielding, they just become a way too difficult to deal with. I agree with, yeah, I don't think we need quantum shielding. I think a better living metal would be good. I think you should get at least d3 living metal if not three living metal maybe <laughs> it is hard isn't it and i'm sure games workshop have this trouble so well what do we do especially when they think well we don't want to make it too good because we don't want people buying uh, using their old monoliths we want them buying doomsday arcs for the most part, I find I sacrifice high point models for lots of smaller units. Uh, the six units of death marks become the core of the army, so I plan around that. Very good for objective games. Yeah, I can see that. Um, when I used to play, and I went to a tournament, seventh edition, with uh, a whole uh, MSU based army. I had, I think I remember, I had six squads of three wraiths i had six squads of three scarab swarms 
and then I had lots of squads of warriors, and they used to be able to come in fives. So I had some warriors. I had in, in, I had some. I think I had a squad of death marks coming in as well. So that everything basically was minimum quantity. So I had loads of it. Um, I did really well with that army. Good night, Nick. Good night. It is actually we're coming up to. Well, we're actually just over an hour, so I probably will wrap up soon. Um, has anyone got any more questions? How would you build an army around three tomb sentinels? I don't know because I've um, I've never actually used a tomb sentinel because I don't have the models. So. Tomb Sentinels obviously are going to come in on, I assume you're going to be coming in on turn two with them, deep striking them in. So you're going to want something to cope with uh, what your army's, what your opponent's going to do beforehand. So you're going to need some long range guns. I probably wouldn't change too much from what I do. You know, a couple of Doomsday Arcs, uh, some Destroyers, usual Necron stuff really. See you next time, Nick. I'm logging off for the night. Good night. Fire breathing duck. Hello, Darby. He says, face some Necrons about a month back with my Harlequins. I failed my turn one and two turn two charges. Unlucky. It was a glorious death at the hands of Gauls. My opponent was channeling some idic Necron luck, I think. <laughs> Good to hear for the Necrons. Necrons! Would you like to 3D print just for fun if you could inexpensively? I don't think I would actually. Um, I've got nothing to 3D print. Maybe terrain, but then I've got loads of terrain. Maybe, I mean, I've got a lot of Aldar jet bikes that I need to change the weapons on. So I suppose arguably it'd be pretty good to print those myself. Um, but I'm not really that bothered too much about 3D printing. Okay, so we have run at just over an hour, so I think I am going to call it there. Thank you so much for everyone who um, has joined the chat and watched the video and everyone who's going to watch it back afterwards. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you very soon. Beam me up. <laughs>